press conference celebrating DGE's Green Grants. My name is Alex, thank you. My name is Alex Nunez. I'm the Vice President for Governmental and External Affairs for BGE. And we have a great program prepared for you today. Uh, we'll be listening to some of our key elected officials. We'll be listening to three of our grant recipients. So uh, welcome you, thank you very much for being here today, and let me introduce our MC for the day, Calvin Butler, Senior Vice President for Regulatory and External Affairs for BGE. Calvin? Well, let me also be one of the many uh, this morning to say welcome and to uh, thank you for being here. As uh, I'm, I'm not as good as Alex, so I'm gonna use notes just to make sure I don't forget anything. And when my team said, Calvin, hey, we'd, we'd really like you to MC this event, I said, MCing is not my thing. And they said, look, if Arsenio Hall can come back after all these years, you can MC an event. So I said, okay, put a little pressure on me, but here I am. Um, but let me again, good morning, and thank you for joining us today for what I believe represents a true investment in not just the protection and preservation of the environment, but also an investment in the communities throughout Central Maryland in which we live and work. I especially want to take the opportunity to thank the Living Classrooms Foundation and the Frederick Douglass Isaac Myers Maritime Museum for their hospitality and hosting and dialing up this great weather uh, for today's press conference. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge and welcome our speakers. We have here, who's joined us today, Maryland's uh, Lieutenant Governor, Anthony Brown, and we have also with us Howard County. <laughs> Howard County Executive, Ken Ullman, who's always right on time. Uh, we have with us, of course, Baltimore City's great mayor, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. We have James Piper Bond, President and CEO of Living Classrooms Foundation, and also a 2013 BGE Green Grant recipient. We have with us Elvia Thompson, Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, a 2013 Green Grant recipient and co-founder of Annapolis Green. And also Meg Schumacher-Boyd, Executive Director, the Howard County Conservancy, a 2013 BGE Green Grant recipient. And importantly, I'd like to recognize each of the representatives here today from the organizations throughout BGE Central Maryland Service Area who are receiving a BGE Green Grant. We are so pleased to have you with us today. It's seldom that we actually get an opportunity to say thank you for all the great work you're doing to impact the communities in which you represent and in who you are sitting here today as a recipient of our Green Grant. I now have the honor of turning it over to Ken DeFontis, our President and Chief Executive Officer of BGE. Ken. Calvin, good morning. Uh, it really is um, a pleasure to be with you today, and, and what a beautiful and appropriate setting to hold an event that acknowledges each of your organization's dedication to environmental stewardship. You know, BGE does have a long-standing commitment to enhancing the communities that we serve, whether it's through philanthropic giving or employee volunteer opportunities. And this year's newly launched BGE Green Grants program represents another way to extend that commitment to our customers. Importantly, the BGE Green Grants program has the opportunity to make a very visible and positive impact on the communities throughout Central Maryland. Through the conservation efforts, or such as green space and habitat preservation and protection, or through community activism, such as cleanups and the creation of urban forests or community gardens. These grants will provide the funds to help make these projects both viable and successful. You know, BGE does take very seriously its responsibility and commitment to enhancing the neighborhoods across Maryland and incorporate responsible environmental practices in everything that we do. In fact, the company has been recognized as an industry leader, both nationally and internationally, in environmental stewardship. 
For the past two years, BG has received international recognition for its enhanced environmental management practices through the International Organization for Standards, ISO certification. We're one of a few utilities in the country that have ISO 14001 certification wall-to-wall -wall across the entire company. And we're pretty proud of that. It took a lot of hard work and a rigorous certification process to achieve that. This year, BG was awarded the Partner of the Year by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for the third year in a row for contributions relating to reducing greenhouse gas emissions by offering services and products to BG customers to increase energy efficiency. Now, we applaud our customers for their commitment to reducing their energy use, which is a direct benefit to the environment. Through our BGE Smart Energy Program Savers, we have saved nearly 1.5 billion kilowatt hours. That's the enough to power 165,000 homes a year. Uh, you know, that's pretty remarkable when you think about how much we've achieved in a short time. We also have a robust recycling program. We do uh, uh, single stage recycling and have achieved one of the highest level of recycling across our company. And uh, we actually have hold the EPA WasteWise Hall of Fame designation for our recycling efforts. You see, you didn't know that, you know. Uh, I have one of those little blue things in my office and I make sure I put all my waste in there. It's really great. Uh, for 10 straight years, the BGE Forestry Operations Unit received the Plant or People Loving and Nurturing Trees Award from the Maryland Urban and Forest Committee. The BG commitment to the environment does not just touch on preserving the habitats for rare and endangered species. The company also works to protect those animals and plant species as well. So in 2008, a pair of American bald eagles caused a great deal of concern over a nest they were building high atop a BGE high voltage line in Marley Creek in Anne Arundel County. With an eye towards balancing a commitment to protecting the once endangered American bald eagles and also protecting the reliability of our system, the environmental team at BGE took the initiative to create a safe nesting platform for the Eagles. And I'm proud to say this is the first time a utility company had ever successfully relocated an American bald eagle's nest in the United States. And if you've ever seen a bald eagle in this area, they, they really are majestic creatures. Now our employees are also equally committed to giving back to the communities through their own charitable giving and their volunteer support. Together with our customers, we actively team up with organizations that work to enhance the quality of life in the communities where our customers and employees live and work. Since our founding nearly 200 years ago, you probably didn't know this, but BGE is the oldest utility in North America, founded in 1816. We play an integral role in working to support economic development, environmental protection, public safety, civic issues, and other important initiatives to help improve the quality of life for so many throughout Central Maryland. Our commitment to charitable giving focuses on funding programs that will deliver measurable and sustainable impact in four areas, education, the environment, community development, and arts and culture. I'm so pleased to announce that to date, in 2013, we have provided more than 2.2 million in charitable contributions to 150 organizations. In addition to our commitment to philanthropic giving, we also have a robust employee volunteer program. I'm proud to say that hundreds of our own BG employees also volunteer without your organizations and organizations like yours throughout Central Maryland to improve, preserve, and protect the environment. This year, BGE employees have logged more than 4,100 hours with 70 not-for-profit organizations through the end of uh, August. Uh, that's pretty remarkable. In fact, um, you know, into, you know, BG has a long history of intense volunteerism, and, and it's really amazing uh, how much that helps us, you know, engage our employees. And, and what I find is their work in community organizations like yours brings back to us an even better quality employee because it, it builds skills for them. So it really has been a, a beneficial and symbiotic relationship between us and the community. So that's why today I'm so proud to officially announce the awarding of more than 400,000 in grants to nearly 50 501c3 not-for-profit organizations who are making incredible strides in environmental stewardship across BGE service area. As part of BGE's long-standing commitment to environmental stewardship, we launched the BGE Green Grants Program in April of this year. 
The BGE Green Grants Program is designed specifically for local not-for-profit organizations committed to improving and making a positive impact in the environment. The grants were awarded in five environmental focus areas, conservation, education, energy efficiency, pollution prevention, and community activism. We greatly value the work that you're doing, and we also value the relationship we have with your organization. So we're pleased to now have the unique opportunity to strengthen our collective ties as part of the parent company, Exelon or, or, uh, Corporation's commitment of $70 million of philanthropic grants over 10 years for Maryland. Today's announcement is just yet another visible affirmation of that commitment. Some examples of the green initiative, the initiatives that we've received or have received grants through this initiative, environmental education programs, energy efficiency initiatives, recycling days, neighborhood beautification and tree planting, energy and health programs, bioscience education and outreach, a city farm for Joseph Lee Park in Baltimore City, natural play spaces, restoration of parks, a community wildlife habitat, well, you get the message. It's, it's all over the board. And it is pretty remarkable. Um, later, you'll hear a little bit more detail about some of the specific work that's being done in Baltimore City here at Living's Cla Living Classrooms, where the funds will support the Masonville Cove Land and Sea Environmental Education Program. We will also hear about the great work being done through the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay and their red light recycling, greening and greeting at the upcoming Annapolis boat shows. And finally, we will hear from the Howard County Conservancy about how they will use the funds to support a green place to play. So in conclusion, it is a personally a pleasure to applaud and thank each of you and your organizations for the important work that you do in Maryland to make this place a greener and cleaner and better place to live. On behalf of the nearly 3,500 employees at BGE, we look forward to continuing our close working relationship and, and our support, both monetarily and through volunteerism, to each of your organizations for many years to come. Now, it's my pleasure to turn the event back over to Calvin for the continuation of the event. Thank you very much. So there you go. I, um, the exciting part about this is we're just getting started. As Kent laid out the history of what we do and why we do it, the exciting part about today um, is $400,000 uh, awards to the different organizations that we're just scratching the surface on the many great things that we can do together. I now have the pleasure of recognizing a couple of people that, you know, Kim talked about all the money that we give away, that we um, charitably give to organizations and the amount of hours, but shame on us if we don't recognize the people who run those programs. Um, Lynn Hurdlick, who I know is here, she didn't think I was going to, she didn't put this in my notes. So uh, Lynn and Melissa Chi, you know, for, for what you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis, thank you very much. And you know, you always hesitate when you start throwing out some names, you're going to miss miss people's names but you know from Rachel Lighty to from doing the media to um, Maureen Casey and just others who are here thank you very much for all the work uh, from our media staff Emmanuel Moore Gabe you know thank you guys for putting this together as I sit back and I look at these things I know they don't happen by accident I know you come for various reasons but I know a lot of you also come for respect of your colleagues at BGE so thank you I now have the opportunity to turn it over um, to the Howard County Executive, Ken Ullman, to uh, give some remarks. And uh, Ken, thanks again for being here today. Thank you very much, Calvin. And to the entire team, Ken, thank you for your, uh, your support of such a great cause. To all the recipients, uh, congratulations. And more importantly, thank you for what you do every day. I, um, I just wanted to be here briefly to, uh, to recognize, uh, especially my friends from Howard County who are here. So to the folks from the uh, Center for uh, Outdoor and Environmental Education, congratulations. And thank you for all you do to lead the Maryland Green Schools uh, effort. I know my daughter, when she was in fifth grade at Pointers Run Elementary School, loved being a part of the green team that got the certification of a green school. And I watched her and, and, uh, and her friends and, uh, and fellow students learn so much about runoff and stormwater impacts and recycling and all those things that uh, we need to do to make sure we, uh, we, we educate the next generation of environmentalists. So thank you and a round of applause for our, the Green Schools Initiative and also to my friends uh, Meg and Allison who are here from the Howard County Conservancy. Uh, if you haven't been, please 
take a trip out to Route 99 in Western Howard County, and you will uh, find a, a true gem in the Howard County Conservancy. I also must mention that uh, together, uh, last year, I guess maybe a year and a half ago now, uh, I decided uh, on behalf of the citizens of Howard County to acquire and preserve the historic Belmont Estate, which is the original uh, home of Caleb Dorsey, the founder of Elkridge. It's uh, well over 200 plus years old, and it is uh, a large parcel nestled in Patapsco State Park. We are restoring the manor and will open it up in partnership with the Conservancy as a nature and historic park. Uh, open to the public. So it's something we're very, very proud of because another place where we will be uh, training and educating the next uh, generation of, of environmentalists. Uh, I just want to say to the folks at Living Classrooms, thank you for uh, all the work you do down here. I was noticing the beautiful, beautiful boat with the flag that says Living Classrooms, the flag that says Baltimore Orioles, and we know we need a last month playoff push. Uh, here, tough loss last night, 4-3. I was uh, watching that comeback just fall short. But I would also suggest that if we could, in honor of uh, tomorrow night's uh, start of the uh, defending Super Bowl champion Ravens season, we could get a Ravens flag up there too. It would, it would look beautiful. It would complement perfectly. Um, I just really want to say uh, again, uh, you know, we know in the public sector that. We need to make more progress uh, cleaning up our environment uh, uh, for our future, and we can only truly do that by engaging the public and engaging uh, the private sector and engaging our business community. So the fact that uh, you're investing over $400,000 today into some of the best uh, nonprofit organizations in Maryland is a real testament uh, to this. I'm glad that Calvin said it's just the beginning because we have a lot of additional work to do. And, and in Howard County, from uh, running a, a clean fleet to uh, launching, we opened up uh, Worthington Elementary School as the first solar-powered school with an array uh, next door that powers over 90%, or uh, the work that we're doing around stormwater runoff. We're here in the Inner Harbor. Well, we have a responsibility in Howard County uh, being a steward of the watershed in both the Patapsco River and the uh, Patuxent River that uh, uh, that run through Howard County with the headwaters and what you see here starts somewhere else, uh, as we all know. We also, was mentioned recycling, I also, just one of my pet issues, uh, we launched in Howard County last year and we're now up to, we've expanded to two zones of our 15 for trash and recycling. We now do once a week food scrap pickup. Uh, we are uh, one of the only places in the country now that does uh, food scrap once a week pickup at the home. I think we all, uh, at least I believe, that we can set a goal of having zero waste. And if you think about what goes into the single stream recycling and what can go into food scrap organics, we should really have very little trash. And it's all about changing the culture. And that's why it's important that we're here at events today. It's important all the work that you're doing uh, back home in your organizations to continue to change that culture and create create the next generation of environmentalists so we can make even more project, pro, progress uh, on our planet together. Thank you all very much for having me. Thank you, Ken. As uh, our county executive states, it starts with leadership. Leadership at the political level, local and state, and leadership within your organizations. And it's my pleasure to introduce our next leader up to the podium, um, City of Baltimore's Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Thank you. It is certainly my pleasure. I've been spending a good amount of time uh, with Calvin. It's good to see you again. And I, I say to DeFontis, you know. I don't, and I, and I know that you don't take this the wrong way. I like to space out the times that I see you because it usually means there's some type of emergency. <laughs> but I, I feel between DeFontis' socks and Calvin's tie, I'm a few colors short of being prepared for today's press conference. Quite dapper, gentlemen, quite dapper. I want to thank Living Classrooms for uh, dedicating or for offering the space uh, for today. And, isn't this a beautiful, beautiful day in Baltimore? Very happy to be here. And this today's event is just another example of the collaborative relationship uh, between BG and E and the city of Baltimore. And as I think back, uh, as we sit here and we watch the ships come in and we look around, uh, we are looking at Baltimore's industrial past, but also uh, this announcement 
represents our industrial future. You know, the partnerships that we continue to have with BGE and Exelon, more than two hundred and twenty five hundred thousand dollars in green grants being awarded to not for profit organizations uh, based in and around Baltimore City. BGD, as has been expressed by Ken and Calvin, you know, they have a commitment to social responsibility and environmental stewardship, and the not-for-profit community should be applauded for seeking private sector funding to assist in the execution of their mission. These grants will help make Baltimore a greener city through efforts such as tree planting in McCaldery Park, city farming at Joseph Lee Park in Bayview, recycling education in Highland Town, and efforts to reduce runoff and conserve energy in Beller Edison. For 26 grants to be awarded to Baltimore City-based not-for-profits speaks volumes to the good and important work that these organizations do to improve the quality of life for the people of Baltimore. So for all of the organizations, I want to thank you for your commitment to excellence and for your track record because you know, we can have the, all, the, all of the goodwill in the world if you don't have organizations who stand at the ready. Uh, to receive these grants because of their track record, uh, we couldn't. We, you know, we'd be giving all the money to Howard County. We don't want that, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. And thank you for acknowledging that and being here for us, County Executive. So again, I want to thank. I want to thank all of the organizations. I want to thank BGE for the partnership, and I want to thank the County Executive. I, I joke him, but you know, it is, it's all a partnership. We stood together very recently at an event for the Chesapeake uh, Shakespeare Company, an organization that started in Howard County that is uh, bringing a location to Baltimore. And when we continue to do things like that, we're making all of our jurisdictions uh, better. We're certainly not taken away from any of them. You know, together we can be better. So I, I appreciate you being here. You're welcome back anytime. And thank you again, uh, <laughs> BG and &E. She left me speechless. So, no, and um, you know, as beautiful as the day is, I, I know it's getting a little warm out here. So I, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, gentlemen who have their blazers on and so forth. Feel free to get comfortable. We have a few more, um, but, but it's all good. So I just want to say thank you, Mayor Rollins Blake. Uh, next, I would like to welcome James Piper Bond, President and CEO of the Living Classrooms Foundation and of course a 2013 Green Grant uh, recipient and our gracious host for today. James. Well, thank you, Calvin, very much. And uh, excuse my raspy voice, but it's an honor to have everyone here this morning. And Ken, it's great to have you here. And, and I applaud you and what you're doing in Howard County. I mean, that's, that's groundbreaking and tremendous and a good example for all of us throughout the state and the country. Mayor Rawlings Blake has always been a tremendous supporter of the environment and, and not only talks about it, but she's out there helping make it happen and we're extremely grateful and, and everyone is welcome here and we're very honored to help host this event here today. This is a historic site and I was telling Ken earlier that this site actually used to be owned by BG&E and back in the Schmoke administration there was a land swap with BG&E and, and we and BG&E's uh, real estate development division helped to assemble a parcel over here and this land became part of the city and was given to living classrooms uh, to fulfill a vision to raise 14 million dollars and create recreate the site of the country's first black owned shipyard and honor Frederick Douglass and Isaac Myers and those 250 men who came together and worked for 18 years to uh, as the country's first black owned shipyard so this is a very historic site please make yourselves at home and check out the museum on the second floor or the digital arts center or come to the waterfront uh, kitchen restaurant which is a partnership that employs our project serve and fresh start graduates and utilizes the vegetables that are grown at our campus right across the way on caroline street where we help start the first charter school in the area in Baltimore 12 years ago, which is a green school, which we're proud of as well. Uh, so it's, it's a real honor today, and we're especially honored to be a recipient of these uh, these grants. And uh, you know, I was talking to Ken, and I really thank Ken and Calvin, who I've had a real pleasure to get to know over the last year or so, and the whole team, the bg &E team. Lynn is fantastic. Uh, they've supported us with Project Serve and in many different ways. Uh, they're supporting our new school uh, with all the development going on around here. We're looking at turning lemons into lemonade and make it all great, uh, you know, to really have this be a, an amazing new part of Baltimore. And um, Living Classrooms is uh, 
very focused on helping the next generation. And this grant is going to help us in, a, in another area of town where people don't think about our involvement. But Masonville is an area of town in South Baltimore, which people don't really know much about. But there are 12 schools over there who need support and need support environmental stewardship and they're Title I schools. So we will work with each of those schools, with Christine Truitt and our educational department, and we will work in the schools. We will bring them to this amazing little environmental center, which is uh, right on the waterfront. Well, they will be young scientists, and they will have hands-on experience to learn about science, technology, engineering, and math. They will also get out on the water on historic vessels like the Mildred Bell, which Ken pointed out earlier. And, and they will out, get out on the water, they will test the waters of the bay, and they will also come up with reasons, not only to clean up the bay, but how they personally can be involved in that future as stewards for the environmental future of Baltimore City and the Patapsco River and the Chesapeake Bay. So it's, a, it's an exciting program for us. We're extremely grateful. This is going to help thousands of children uh, and help them to uh, be successful in the future. And so we are very, very grateful. Have a wonderful time. Make yourselves at home. Come back often. Thank you. No substitute for passion. And um, I think each of our recipients demonstrate that quality or we wouldn't be here today. So James, thank you very much. Next, I would like to invite Alvia Thompson from the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, also a 2013 BGE Green Grant recipient to make some remarks, Alvia. Uh, Madam Mayor, Mr. Ullman, uh, Ken, Calvin, James, thank you very much. We're thrilled to be here from Annapolis. Uh, I'm co-founder of Annapolis Green along with Lynn Forsman, who is right here. And we are under the auspices of the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay right now as we wait for our 501c3 filing to finally come through. <laughs> um, so I just want to tell you a little bit about us and then tell you what we're going to use the funds for. Um, Annapolis Green is kind of a different organization. Um, what, we, what we are really, really good at is bringing the environmental community together and actually creating community around the environment in our capital city. Um, we do this with our online um, uh, resources, we have a weekly radio program, and then we also run uh, Green Drinks Annapolis. Now, you may be smiling wondering what that is. That's the only opportunity that people in the environmental community and those who m might be interested get together in person to get to know one, one another casually over a cocktail and really good things happen. Because it's a lot easier to pick up the phone and talk to somebody that you've met in person and you want to do something together, a partnership of some kind. So we're using the, the uh, grant money uh, along with a grant that we obtained from the Boat US Foundation. And what we're doing is we're bringing recycling to one of the biggest events held on Waterside in Annapolis, and that's the two Annapolis boat shows that happen every year. This will be the 38th year, I think, of the sailboat show, and uh, maybe 32nd, something like that, for the powerboat show. And in all that time, there's been very little, in fact, no recycling, until we got into it and convinced the management, who are now our very good partners, that there is a need for this. Because after all, we're all here because of the water. And it, it is good to keep the water clean and to put that information in people's minds. But let me tell you how a success that we had recently, not on the water necessarily, but kind of related to this, so that we can give you an idea of the scope of what money like this can go for. Um, we recently brought recycling for the first time ever to the Annapolis Rotary Club's uh, crab feast, the world's largest crab feast. This was their 68th year of getting between two and 3,000 people together to celebrate the Chesapeake Bay's bounty. We only re brought recycling and composting um, to this event, just to the VIP part of the event, which was one fourth. We composted 4,500 pounds of crab shells, watermelon rinds, um, leftover barbecue, all that kind of thing. And everything else was recycled and there was just a little bit of trash. Next year we're going to do the entire event and it's going to be a zero waste event. So, so that's going to mean probably about 20,000 pounds of composting. And our composting partner, uh, Veteran Compost, which is run by a Gulf War veteran, um, 
in, he said that in about two months, the crab shells and even the, the wooden mallets will turn into compost for somebody's garden in just two months. So 20,000 pounds and a lot of recycling and zero trash. So we're very proud of that. So that's, that's kind of the goal that we have for not only the U.S. boat shows in Annapolis, but also all of the special events and all the festivals in our area. There's so many of them and very few of them have recycling. And it's just because people don't think about it. So our goal, just to kind of finalize, our, our goal in Annapolis Green is really to put ourselves out of business. We would like to see the Annapolis area, in fact, the entire state, be a place where people live and act and play sustainably without even thinking about it, that that's just the way things are here. So that's our goal, and we'd like to thank BGE very much for the funds. Um, specifically, we're using the funds to buy um, 25 more eco stations, and these are very colorfully um, marked uh, landfill. We don't call them trash anymore. Now we call them landfill. Landfill bins together with um, recycling bins so that people know what to put where. Very colorfully marked and managed for us by one of our board members, John Nicklin, who has a company called Waste Strategies. And we couldn't do this without him. And maybe we can bring composting to the boat shows next year as well for all those limes that go in the painkillers. <laughs> so thank you so much. And please come and visit us in Annapolis. Our next Green Drinks is September 11th. We would love to have all of you there. You can find the information on our website. We'd love to see you there, Mr. Ullman. And your reputation precedes you. <laughs> thank you so much. So Ken, it's all about the green drinks, all right? So, that's right, that's right. So, yeah, so, you know, as this is going to be an annual event for us, hopefully, and, and I sit back, if 10 years from now you're still receiving it, we're going to hold you to going out of business, all right? So, unless you repurpose yourself, we're going to keep you right there. So, now I have the pleasure of, last but not least, um, to welcome Meg Schumacher Boyd from the Howard County Conservancy, also a 2013 BG Green Grant recipient. Meg, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, we wanted to thank BGE certainly for this grant, but really for years of partnership. Um, we were talking earlier with Mike Fowler, who I see back there, um, about a, a program that BGE did with us in March, uh, an extreme weather conference for ninth grade students. And the BGE station was the most popular station there. Um, if you all can imagine 150, 15 year olds watching a hot dog get cooked by high voltage, um, it'll give you just some picture of how exciting that station was for, for the students. So thank you also for the years of partnership BGE. Um, we've heard a lot of wonderful things about Ken Ullman, um, and I can tell you, um, running the Howard County Conservancy, the partnership with the county government is fantastic. Um, one thing Ken didn't share with you, um, out of all the environmental initiatives that he supports, is our land conservation program, our conservation easement program. And what's wonderful about Ken is that he supports the land preservation piece, but also knows that you have to support the education piece as well. He really knows it's a puzzle you have to put together. If you do the preservation and you don't do the education with it, then you're just not going to be successful. So another, another thank you to Ken for his support. Um, I wanted to talk just briefly about what this particular grant is going to support at the Conservancy. I think um, many of us, as we were growing up, I'm looking around and seeing lots of people my age here, remember being told uh, when you were little, go outside and play. Do you all remember hearing that from mom and dad? And raise your hand if it was followed up by, don't come back till it's dark outside. <laughs> so I heard that a lot in my house. Um, and we know that now that's just not happening anymore. Um, there's study after study telling us that kids aren't getting out for unstructured play outside. They're spending a lot of time with screens um, and things are changing. And we know that if we are going to create future environmental stewards, they have to connect with nature as young people. They have to love nature and connect to it. Otherwise, when they grow up, they're not gonna have, have that love of nature. And so what we're gonna use this grant for is to create a natural play space at the Conservancy. And this is gonna be a safe and welcoming way for children to come outside and get introduced to nature in some cases, explore nature. It's gonna be a natural play area and it's gonna have features such as a crawl through log tunnel, um, a musical fence, 
building materials for forts and ferry houses. I know we all remember making lots of those in the woods when we were little. Climbing stumps, balance beam logs, and the wonderful thing about it is it will be located next to our apple orchard, next to our goats and our chickens, uh, our sensory garden. So we're going to bring these children in, draw them in in a welcoming way, and then let childhood take over and let them explore everything else out there in nature. So a huge thank you to BGE. I welcome you all to come check out the Conservancy, our natural play area. Um, we're open dawn to dusk, seven days a week, four miles of trail. So I hope to see you all there soon. May, thank you very much. And as you mentioned, it all starts in the local communities. And we have a, BG has a tremendous uh, team that's outreaching in our communities that I want to take a, a minute to acknowledge. Uh, being led, of course, by, from our marketing side, from David Milton. I want to say, David, thank you for your leadership. Michael Davenport, Matt Michael Davenport. We also have Mike Fowler, who was mentioned, and Linda Foy, and Jackie Freeberger. I mean, individuals that many of you may not have the opportunity to meet. Hopefully, if you haven't met our community affairs people, we got some issues, but they're, they're out there every day doing their job, and we just wanted to say thank you to them. At this time, um, as we wrap up, I'd like to invite um, Ken DeFontis, Ken Ullman, the Mayor, Stephanie Rollins Blake, Hope Stewart from the Office of Anne Arundel County, Executive Laura Newman, up for what we'd like to consider our official check uh, presentations, which is great because you get to uh, get presented this very large check uh, for you to put in your office as just as an acknowledgement of our um, of the grants. So if you could come up.